and everything stops for tea. Well, a very good afternoon. Here we are, 23rd of June, 4 o'clock, and welcome to a cup of tea with Mr. G. If you are tuning in, as always, please just drop us a comment. Love to see the people who are joining us on the show. And as always, if you have a question, any questions, or just say, hi, I'm watching, please drop a comment in. And I'm going to tell you all about my special guest very shortly. But before I do that, if you joined the cup of tea with Mr. G last last time that was jeffrey vickery from friends of ambassador cruise line and uh, cruise and maritime voyages memories of that wonderful site jeffrey left a question for you and our sponsor the tea house our wonderful people the tea house they gave a prize to be won and here it is it's 250 grams of the tea house's finest english breakfast tea now the question was uh, Jeffrey said, Cruise and Maritime Voyages, when, when did they first start doing a round the world cruise? What year was that? And what ship was that? Okay. So that was the question. And I'm so pleased to say that Mike Corsa, if you're tuning in, then you are the winner. And I've uh, got the tea here. So I'm going to be sending that through. I'll get your details from you and I'll put it in the post. So the answer was the Magellan cruise ship and the year was 2017 so we will be asking another question today chance for you to win more tea and that question is going to be asked by my special guest today what can i say about my special guest uh i really think that the best thing to do is just to let this video clip do the talking And here is my special guest. And let me just see if behind the Tea House logo we have our special guest today, and that is Mr. Don Reed. Hello, Don. Hello there, dear boy. I'm sat here with bated breath. Okay. I put that little clip together because there's just so much you've done in your career. Well, yeah, I was obviously too cheap. <laughs> Uh, Ken Dodd. That career, was, a, that was the last. That was the last clip on that little montage. Ken Dodd. And how many times did yeah. you work with Ken? I lose count. I said something to somebody one time as a joke, and they didn't get the. I said I worked with him tons of time. Preston, Northampton, <laughs> Stanton. They didn't get what I was saying. Didn't get it. I, I, I could never understand why his manager used to be Keith. And McAndrews and I said, I never understand why Doddy has me on the show. He said, Because A, he enjoys your company, and B, you're a kitchen sink comic. You do family, marriage, etc., which he doesn't do. So you're not competition. Hmm. I'm a kitchen sink comic. <laughs> and you worked with Ken in a lot of charity work. Tell me about yeah. the charity work that you did. Well, we used to, he'd put shows on and we would be paid out of his pocket. We would get paid our fees, but he he made it look like we'd given our time freely. And he, it was that sort of man. When we would do shows, I, I did some, I think, free, but not not very, very many. Uh, there were certain things like there was one to buy a plank 
for Southport Pier when it was in a terrible state, things like this. We would go along willingly and give our time for things like that. He was he was a great man. I have a lot of respect for him. And I was I listening to Radio 2 when Lady Lady Ann Dodd was being interviewed about the book that's just come out. It's a must-read. I'm, I'm sure you will endorse that. Uh, but he asked the question, why did Ken work so long? That's the one. That's the one. Yes. Uh, could you just I've call, out, it. call out the title it. of it? It's uh, The Squire of Nottyash and His Lady. And inside it's written there... For Don, for many years of friendship and laughs, all the best, love Anne. It was her birthday. She was 80 last Saturday. Sorry, she was 21 oh. again last Saturday. Yeah. yeah that, that's a... <laughs> so So, why do you think did Ken do so long on stage? It was his... Uh, if you said you don't go on stage again, he would have just curled in, I think. He enjoyed yeah. being on stage. He enjoyed the buzz. You know, we call it Dr. Stage. Yes. How you, you go on the green and you feel wonderful, you know. And he controlled the show. From the moment he walked out, he would stand at the back, tickling six ready, and I'm here. And then he would walk down and do it in the palm of his hand then, yeah. I heard him once say he saw it as building a bridge from the stage to the audience. Yeah. And he had to cross that bridge to be able to get to the audience. Yeah. And you also, know, is it true that is it true, John, that you would say he was absolutely meticulous about note taking in regards to saying, "Oh, last time I did Liverpool, it was raining. This time, it was bright sunshine. So I'm not going to do the same acts because obviously the audience was in a different mood just by the weather." Yeah, he would he would lodge he would keep notes on everything. And uh, if I think I sent you a copy in uh, the papers he gave us when we were writing for him, and he got an A4 yeah. with. Scribble, scribble like that, but he he knew his system. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've got it. I don't know if I've, I've took a note of that. Let me just say I might not have, but I know what you mean. And it, it's literally like a spider has just gone across the page. Yeah. And it's only chemists could read it. He used to say, <laughs> yeah. "You you write an awful lot, uh, as well as obviously being a, a stand up comedian. But you wrote pantos and everything. What is your process for writing comedy, Don?" Uh, I, I take what I want to be the subject matter, and then if I've got a good tagline, I work backwards and build a story to it. You know, as you perform, that you, it's just a matter of building it up. The guy who taught me a lot said it's like building a house of cards, and the higher you get with the cards, the bigger the laugh you get when they fall down, you know. So I would keep going. I'm sorry about that. It's a pigeon. I've got a friendly pigeon. I call him Walter. He, keep, he wanders around outside. And uh, the, 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 I then found what I'm going to write it about. I'll choose the subject. We used to do great routines from like the 50 pence gag and all. That probably, you've probably done some of these front cloth. You know, we would do these gags. And then you would write something else. And then you would send it off to somebody else. I wrote a gag about Hong Kong, which got sent up and was used a little... I think the idea was used when you by the two Ronnies about Hong Kong ping pong and all this sort of thing, you know. And you just get something that whirls in your head and then you go with it, you know. So, and do you, do you think, Don, there's only a certain amount of comedy subjects? I know this conversation has been discussed by a lot of comedy entertainers, but for a comedian, do you think there's how, how what how many th main subjects do you think there are in comedy? I think there's eight. People say, oh, there's only ever five jokes written, etc. But I think there's eight uh, avenues to go down with them. Uh, what would that, they that, be? That you can fit them in. Uh, I've got it written down here. So I think the first one is animal. Yeah. Which covers any sorts of jokes. Like the, a snail was mugged by a tortoise. The police said, would you recognise him? He said, no, it all happened so fast. And okay. because it's animal jokes, you can get away with things like that. Uh, yeah. But, you know, ethnic. I don't like the phrase racist because it's, it's too big a blanket. They said yeah. he said something racist, which they never tell you what it was. But if you yeah. said he said an ethnic remark, you could then choose and support which group are being picked on. You know, um, uh, uh, And would you say that goes right back to, say, in the 70s where it was uh, deemed ex uh, acceptable with that, with stand-up comedy, with comedy situation comedy that that was a huge huge type of thing ethnic comedy and it was yeah. just taken as uh, accepted 
it was the norm, you know. But having said that, in the 70s, we also went the other way. If you remember, the, we, we stopped playing rugby against the South African side because of apartheid. We were yeah. working the other way, you know. And so, uh, yes, but I still think if you told the joke, that you say, which group you told it about, whether it's a Chinese or a Turkish or an Irish, you know. Yeah. Um, I used to love the Irish lines, like, follow me, uh -huh. I'm right behind you. The things like this. Uh, but the, even those, you've got to be so careful that you know you're treading on someone's toes. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to come back to your list in a minute because I'm find I find it quite fascinating, and that's number two of number eight. But yeah. just what we can and cannot say now. I know uh, Paul Eastwood, that one wonderful comedian, was on a cup of tea, Mr. G, and we were talking about this as to what you can and cannot say. How how do you see comedy today? Uh, well, it, it's. It, it's such a wide open door now. When I first worked television, you weren't allowed to say damn or bloody or anything like this. But now they make they make a statement. They say, what is it? Uh, it, it contains adult humour and strong language. Did they say that? But to me, what is strong language? It, it's something like um, strong, a strapping, well-built, rugged, muscular person, yet seemingly athletic enough to become an embroiderer's apprentice. And then adult humour is what daddy said to mummy. And, but it, 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 what they what they actually mean is it's crude and offensive, you know. So, uh, but having said that, we go on stage. We never go on stage to offend somebody. I don't know if you remember. I used to use the line on the lectures. If you think there may be something I can say that offends you, the emergency exits are here, here, and here, like this, you know. Yeah. But, uh, it, it's, it's comedy nowadays. Everything moves on. And I think it's moved sure. on to another level. That is, 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 it, it never suits me, bad language, anyway. Well, if, if, if I ever say, forgive me, Lord, when I drop things on the floor, but that's down the microphone. Not uh, yeah. funny. Oh. So back to your list, Don. Number three on your list is what? Number three then becomes historical. Jobs yeah, that are used historical base, like um, they said to Guy Fawkes, "Will you blow up the House of Parliament?" Yeah. When do you want to do it? He said, well, "What about bonfire night?" <laughs> yeah, King Harold auditioning archers, and he said, "I'll do the job." But my brother's got to come, and he, he was all over the place. He said, "He'll put somebody's eye out if he's not careful." And those are historical jokes, aren't they? You know, jokes about the war, or even last yeah. year's still. History. And then next becomes uh, number six on the list. Uh, we're up to number one, two, three, four, number, number five. Oh, number, number five. five, sorry. That's the other category. Yeah. Counting yeah. incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. yeah history. Sorry, well, number well, five. Yeah. If I remember historically, Mr. G was not very good at maths at school. You know? <laughs> no, nor, nor writing or writing. Yeah. <laughs> it, a satirical becomes like... Uh, a man said, have you seen Boris Johnson's hair? It looks like a sheep bottom. And this man thumped him. He said, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know you were a conservative. He said, I'm not. I'm a shepherd. Yes, which that is the sort of joke which I think will be very funny. At the Tory conference. Well done, Don. Hurrah. Hurrah. We've got to be able to have a laugh. Of course we have. There's one thing I like about Dominic Cummins. Well, actually, there's two things I like about Dominic Cummins. His face. What's number six? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sexist. Right. Yeah, uh, like the woman stood in front of me. I feel awful. Look at me. My boobs are sacking and put on weight and, I'm, and my skin and my hair. And he said, well, your eyesight's okay. It, it, that, that's sexist type jokes, aren't they, you know? But there again, you go back to, say, the Coronation Street, uh, Mildred, um, uh, George and Mildred. Yeah. That type of comedy line about would run years. throughout, you know. And still still does, you know. It's gone well, the other what way. Was it? What was it? Jack and Vera. Aye, I, I, Jack, I tell you, when you're dead, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dance on your grave. Shorts me off. Game over the sea. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, that, my... that was part of that comedy uh construction, wasn't it? Uh, and yeah, I suppose yeah. it was the sexist, and uh, and then of course the mother in law jokes are banned. Les Dawson, obviously, yeah. a big trade of his was to do the mother in law joke, so that all comes under sexist, would you yeah, say? Yeah. My wife said to me, she said, My mother's coming down for Christmas, 
I said, right, she said, she's fed up in the attic. <laughs> and it's that type of fume is is lovely. Nice Tommy effect. Tommy Cooper, Tommy Cooper there again. A lot of a lot of his sort of jokes were anyway, number thirteen on your list. <laughs> <laughs> Um, number we, number six. Yeah, we get to situation. That right. can be anything. Situation, something of every day that happens, you know. At the Yorkshire lad went to London uh, and, to, and he couldn't get a job, so he opened a shop. And it was called Arkwright's Medical Cures, £50. If we can't cure it, we'll give you £500. And his solicitors, oh, I'll have a go at this. And he went in and he said, um, hey, put your £50 on the counter. Now, what's wrong? He said, uh, my my sense of taste's gone. He said, I said, oh, the nurse, just give him a glass of that orange juice. Up then he put it out. He went, oh, that's creosote. He said, sense of taste cured, £50. Thank you very much. <laughs> so the next day, he thought, I'm not having this. I'm going to get over this. So he went in and he said, um, I can't come. My memory's gone. My memory's gone. He said, I'll put you £50 down. He said, OK, yeah. He said, that nurse, give me a glass of that orange. He said, that's crazy. He said, memory cured, £50. Thank you very much. So on the fifth day, he went in. He said, my eyesight's gone. I speeded it up like that. He said, I don't think I can fix that. Here's, here's your £50. Your £500. He said, that's 50 He said, eyesight restored. Thank you very much. <laughs> And that's oh, anything great. that takes place, a limerick like or anything it. to put into a situation, yeah. Next one, Don? Topical. Whatever. Yeah, now, you, 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 you go yeah. through the papers every day, don't you? And, and, but I go actually with the, the news on the television. I don't take a paper anymore. The, it brandishes too much venom for me. There's, 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 there's one come out, uh, Prince Andrew's. Sort of a claim. When it says a claim, that means somebody's made a story up and all this sort of thing. I don't, I don't trust journalists, you know. That, so that, where, where like do you, where, where do you get your inspiration from? From topical stuff? Yeah. Is it internet? Yeah, I take the news and then Google gives me some. You know, I've got a, you know, like a an Alexa thing. I've got a Google machine that gives yeah. me the up to date news and that. And uh, I do get a newspaper, if it, especially if you're on the ship and you get the free one. But um, yeah, I, I tend to, I go through the four news channels. I take Sky, BBC One, Al Jazeera, and then RT. I just take I take the rolling scrolling thing more than what they're telling yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. But the news at the moment, there's only one news, isn't it? And it's quite sad, isn't it? Really, the, the situation we're in. You know. Yep. England. <laughs> but uh, we we all we've lost people. I've lost friends and that with this current thing. So, but you, you can make light humour out of that if you, without trying to be offensive, can't you? Like two grandma. I, th I think I, I think I think it's what you're saying is absolutely right because I've got friends who are in the uh, police, fire brigade, ambulance service, and uh, they say we have to have black humour just to be able to cope with the stresses of the job and i think uh funeral yeah. undertakers whoever it is there, there is always humor in something the problem is is that people may not see the funny side of stuff that's the problem well, no. i used to do a routine i vaguely remember about my funeral and I've, I've had my will made out and it's in the will they've got to go into the uh, the spiritual when jesus washed my sin oh happy days they've all got a good clapping and singing along there may be some, I've, I've written a rough eulogy for somebody to read out, but comedy-wise, and then they, when the coffin's gone through the curtain to be cremated, it's got to come back out for one more round of applause, then it's <laughs> going back into Vera Lynn singing with me, look, because you waved me goodbye, and then when the, uh, the final one, when they're walking out, will be Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky. Oh, and brilliant. One, and I've primed somebody that when they all get outside, he's got to point to the chimney up there and say, Don Reed's just left the building. That's what he's just... Love it. I want humour in it, yeah. yeah. I love it, yeah, it, it, absolutely. You know, there, there's not enough laughter in the world. And uh, yeah. I think so many of us who uh, peddle our comic wares for a living have found it very strange to uh, to not be going out and doing what we... I haven't been out on stage doing my act since not this March, but last March. And I'm not alone. A lot of my uh, fellow... Um, entertainment friends are all in the same thing so it's going to be strange and I love reading posts when people say very very nervous 
because people think entertainers don't get nervous but we get we get terribly nervous and then we got terribly yeah. nervous because we haven't worked for so long and then i read the post afterwards they were a fantastic audience i was so worried about it so pleased with because that's all we want to do we, we just want to spread a little bit of happiness and joy into people's lives and uh, yeah. there's no feeling like it when laughter comes back at you and you, you some of them have been saying i forgot but i went back to it I used to, you, you saw my act, I think. Jim Bowen used to say, he's left the main road. I used to veer off at a tangent and then come back somewhere down the line and then carry on, you know. Billy Connolly said that people in comedy, if there's a queue, a traffic jam, we would grab a look from the side, what's causing it, how we can see something funny, get some humour out of it, you know, yeah. But uh, that, on, on Next on your list, or is that was that it? The former one's religious. Yes, Dave, well, Dave Allen, he springs to mind. If you say religion in this country, people mean Christianity, and I don't, I mean all the way. I saw a lovely quote that said a Jew, uh, a Muslim, a Catholic, and a, an atheist went into a coffee bar and had a cup of coffee and had a wonderful time. And that, yeah. that to me, that's yeah, that, was, that, was, that was like John Thompson's Bernard Wright on character, which was yeah. based on Bernard Manning, but this switcheroo made it um, obviously totally a, a, against what Bernard was doing. And Bernard Manning, you knew Bernard Manning very well, didn't you? Well, Bernard Manning's next-door neighbour was an Indian doctor, and she did the eulogy at his funeral. And as much as he said that, she called him Manchester Manning, which is her way of getting back to each other. And it, Bernard was, he didn't go on stage, he said things which are not PC nowadays, but it, it was... He did so much good charity work. When he was, if ever you caught him on the old CB days, he, he called himself Raging Bully Dead. You know, so, yeah. Uh, he, I met he, a wonderful gentleman on a cruise ship, uh, and that was um, Kev Harrison, Chip Shop Kev, they used to call him. Chip Shop Kev. And Kevin, yeah. like, you know, Chip Shop Kev, purveyor of comedy, he's seen every act, um, he, he watches all the shows. And the yeah. first time I met him, I just, just flew in on a long haul flight and I went to the bar and he's next, next to me. I hadn't talked to him, but I just said to him, I said, I like your shirt. He goes, touch it. I said, beg your pardon. He says, touch my shirt. So I touch his shirt. He goes, that's Bernard Manning's shirt. That is. I said, no way. So I just, I, I used to love Bernard's timing. I think nobody could time a joke better than Bernard Manning. His material, obviously that was a different thing, but I think it's because he was Oscar Rayburn big band. He just had that wonderful way of timing, timing gags. But he said, touch me, sir. that's Bernard Manning. And he told me about Bernard. Yeah. And as you say, the charity work, he said he did so much for charity, which nobody knew about. But if he would mention anything, he might say, I'll, I'll tell you what, son, there's £5,000 done for your charity. If you if you tell one person about it, you'll never get another penny off me again. Yeah. You don't want people to think I'm a nice man. That's what he used to say. <laughs> But, but Chip Shop Kev, and he, I'm on to him most days, he puts comments on that sort of thing. And funnily enough, I met Chip Shop Kevin on here. This is the Black Prince. It was the final cruise of the Black Prince. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and that's I'll collect his piece. I and think if that came up at auction, Dom, I think that, uh, that particular mug, in its condition as it is, could fetch uh, about 50p. I think so, yes, because I've got another 200 of them on the shelf to get rid of. Is that your list. list complete then, Don? Because if it is, I'm just going to read out some comments if that's all right with you. I've got well, some comments that are coming you, through. Can I What's tell that? you what you, joke? You, you, you broke out slightly there. Say that one more time. Can I tell you one religious joke? Of course you can, yeah. God said to Eve... I'm going to create a man, we will call him Adam, and let him think that he is the most important thing, and you are his partner. I will create this just for you, Eve, and it will be our secret between you and I, woman to woman. <laughs> and the cracker, and the cracker, that's the way you tell him. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to read some comments here, Don. Because we've got some lovely people that said we've got some people. Some of them are just they are Facebook users, so I don't know who they are. Uh, but we've got somebody saying hi, hi Chris, hello. Uh, another person saying hello, and we've got uh, hi you too. 
as to both of us from another Facebook, the lovely Joyce up in Dudley, my lovely friend Joyce. Hello, both of you. Joyce from uh, up in the, uh, uh, up in Dudley. And then we've got, uh, hello, Chris and Lolo Don Reed. Lolo. Yeah. You know what Lolo now, is, don't you? Now, explain to anybody who's watching Lolo, because I know what it is, because I've been at sea with you so many times. Yeah, it's a Philippine word for grandfather. <laughs> but they call me Lolo Pogi. Now, Pogi means still quite handsome for an old man, and Pangit means ugly. I would say, I would say, Maganango Maga, they, oh, Maganango Maga, Lolo Pogi. I said, no, Pangit, no, you are Pogi. I have so yeah, many yeah. wonderful. Philippine friends, you know we work them. They're, be they're beautiful. Salamat, yeah. salamat. Okay, well, you're gonna I'm like this. You're gonna not like this next comment. I've got a feeling I know who this is from. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Can you talk slower, Don? I'm trying to write down my new act. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm yeah. gonna have a guess who that is, but I, I, actually, I better not say just in case I'm actually wrong and somebody says I wouldn't do anything like that. I don't believe it. I'm going to sue you. But uh, oh. go on, reveal yourself, Facebook user. Can you talk slow, Don? I'm trying to... That's funny, that is. It's obviously a comedian. Uh, and here's one. Two great acts. Well, that's that's five pounds went to good use there, Don. I, made, I took your £2.50, put it with my £2.50. They got it. Two win. great acts. Uh, we've got one here that's coming through. Lovely to hear the jokes and stories from the great variety days. And yeah. I think that's absolutely true. Please keep the comments coming. And let's just go back to those great variety days. Let's just talk about how you started. Now, would I be right in thinking this picture is pretty close to when it all started? Yes, indeed. Yeah. That's me in the middle. That's you I'll in the middle? You. Yeah. All right. Let me just let me just I'll get, let me just get rid of that. There we go. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's you in the middle. And what were you playing? I was bass guitar. And bass guitar. Vocalist. Well, it's a bad bass guitar, but a good vocalist and a ch chatter. Yeah. And the guy on the left is Terry. Ter the one on the left is Terry Baker. I'm still in contact with him. He was a great re reading guitarist. He went off to work with bands in the Mecca days and support artists and people like that. And the other guy was uh, a, a drummer, accordionist, played the bagpipes, etc. Eric. And we became a double act, Don and Eric. That's Is this you, from. Don and Eric? Yeah, yeah. And he used to play the bagpipes. And he, when he got the drones going... He would walk around as if it was a vacuum cleaner, like this, yeah. And we're still in contact, still in contact, yeah. That's a long time Talk ago. Talk about bagpipe players, Leo, Leo Shavers, the great, he's wonderful bagpipes. And he keeps yeah. going back to it as a, as a joke. I think it's wonderful. But he actually helped, uh, um, I'll talk about Leo again, because I think he was involved in your book, and we'll talk about your book later on. But is that right, yeah. Leo, because he's he publisher, he's, Wonderful, knowledgeable chap, yeah. uh, and uh, I think he uh, encourages people get it written, get the book written. I, I, I can actually, I've got the facilities to be able to publish it and print it. So we'll come to your book later on. This picture here, I'm not quite sure. It must be you on the left hand side on the bass. Yeah. And what bass yeah. guitar were you playing then? That was uh, Hofner. I liked Hofner because. The, the scale was short. If you notice, it's a similar length neck to the guitar. I couldn't handle the long scale ones like Fender. Uh, I right. couldn't seem to work on those, yeah. And so I got by on that, yeah. And who's the lady in the middle? Her name was Nancy Whiskey. She was with Chas McDevitt. They had a hit record, a couple of them, uh, Greenback Dollar, and the big one was Freight Train. Freight Train, Freight Train, going so fast. And when she left Chas McDevitt, we did a short tour accompanying her uh, but her real name is mary wilson but she couldn't she use that british person. or american was she british or she american was, just from scotland son i i can't oh, even I, I do apologize um, i haven't heard of it whiskey there should have been a big clue well what happened uh, there's a drink called a nancy whiskey it's a drink in scotland and so she used that name she couldn't call herself mary wilson because there was the american singer called mary wilson of course so, there was yes yeah. She so, was a uh, very good. Yeah. yeah. She was a very good. 
very good, very good entertainer. You know, she, she used to do one of her songs. Used to was "My Mother's Eyes." I found in my mother's eyes. I don't really know that one. Uh, oh yeah, eyes. My mother's eyes. Yeah, in my mother's eyes. Um, okay, we're, we're going for a, a publicity shot now. Yes, Back in time. Good heavens! Wow. That was New Faces days. That was. Oh, wow! Heavens. Had you just come back from Colombia? <laughs> See, much is glass, it appears. Oh, <laughs> say hello Look, to my little friend, name? man. My name what is Don Ray, I'm a comedian, you know. Yeah, see, glassy. Everybody, how has long did you have that long look for, Don? Sorry, how long did you have that look for? I can't remember it. I think it's until the neighbors moved in. It was uh, <laughs> the fast one. Was frilly shirts, open necks, and gold bangles round your neck, and all that. You know, I think it was the forerunner of Del Boy, but it was it was, it was the fashion to do it. You know, and yeah. Thought, okay, yeah. right. We're gonna we're gonna move into something now, which is a bit bit of a heavier subject, and I don't know if you mind talking about it, but you, it, for anybody that that's watching, Don uh, contacted me one time. And he said, listen, dear boy, he said, uh, I've got all this stuff there and I'm, I'm having a sort out and I don't want to throw it out. And I thought, ah, you would have it. So I went up, we met at Warner's, Alveston. We had about a two hour cup of coffee or cup of coffees. And then you yeah. handed me over all these wonderful signed autographs of all my people that I absolutely love when I was a kid growing up and even now. And so I only live in a little flat, but I have what I call the show business wall in the hall. And that's uh, adorned with all the very kind things that you gave me. And at the same time as giving me all the photos and the signed autographs, you gave me a copy of your book. And yes. the book is uh, called Don't Switch Me Off. A coma, a comedian, a career, or a catastrophe. Now, if people haven't, heard about what happened to you would you mind talking about it no problems at all yeah i was i was in a coma well some people think i still am um uh, it was a freak accident and uh, it was one of those things i survived it they brought me back three times uh and i i was apparently at the side of the road so i got a brand new jacket don't let them cut this jacket <laughs> i've no memory of that but they, I was in a comatose state for 20-odd days. They, they kept me. They maintained me comatose because of the damage to the lungs, and they didn't want me settling, et cetera. So uh, I, I, when I get up to the gates of heaven, I'm going to say, you owe me 23 days. I want those back now. So, But it was... A, this, this, was this, is this your car that you were driving? No, no, that's the car that hit me. That's the you car that hit you? It, yeah, the bonnet is where my leg hit. And then the, the windscreen is where my head hit. And then the roof the, the roof is dented where my body came down on it. Yeah. And it was driven my by goodness. my best friend. And you, and you said three times. Did you Was it seeing the light? Yes, I did. I went to the light. It wasn't Hollywood booming choirs and smoke machines and everything. It was just a, a room, like part of a room. I didn't know what it was behind me because I was just stood there waiting to see what happened but i wanted to go through it seemed so so you know wanted but i wasn't yeah. allowed in i was then taken to the lawn of a house in harlech but i used to do some work for the outward bound fundraising and i was taken to on the lawn of this house near harlech and then my family were paraded in front of me and i was shown what they were like now then what they would be like if i'd gone and i was also shown the white persia i'd be driving 10 months later and I didn't buy a Peugeot because I'd seen that. It came to me. So, yeah. And how much did life change for you? Because we're in this very stressful environment of, of entertainment and the show business that goes with it. Um, this was coming back from a gig that you had this terrible accident? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I used to go out with my best friend. And we'd meet up at a, a, a pub on the Northwich Bypass, the smoker. And we'd leave either his vehicle or my vehicle go up to Blackpool, do the show, come back, pick up whichever vehicle was a bit left, and then go our own way, two or three miles, and then I'd go my way and he'd go his way. And I got out of my car to speak to him, and he didn't see me. And he he, he caught me like that, you know. So, uh, wow. And it was a total freak accident, collapsed lung, and there was six ribs at the front, nine at the back, and a fractured skull. 
but I'm, I'm okay now. So how how much did you did life change for you after that accident because of the the, the near death and and seeing the light and things like that? How much did that change change you? Do you think as a, as a person? Well, there were, there were a lot of circumstances at the time. Uh, my wife stayed by the bed side of me, and they put they put her a camper on the hospital car park so she could stay and be close to me. And uh, in the next bed was a boy of 21 who'd been in a motorcycle accident. And one night they said to him, would you mind leaving the room? And she left, and he'd obviously passed away, this kid. Now, I took oh. this on board afterwards. I wanted, Why couldn't I have gone and let this lad have a life? And I got placed under the mental health act. I was, you know, yeah. nervous. But I came out of that with a lot of help and a lot of affection. And it was just... Yeah. One of those things, it it, it 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 changed me, it made life a little bit easier. You know, that's all there is. Just get on with your life and do it. You know, there's uh, I mean, the worst we only have We only have one life, don't we? And we have to yeah. try and make the, make the best of it. Well, one, so, of the things I, so one of the things I go on stage with is that the, the worst that can happen is people don't like you. That's all. That's that, the worst that is that true. Happen. First time I met you, Don, uh, my yeah. lovely... Corky, yeah. Oh, there, yeah. So it was uh, on a on a cruise ship, and I was I was. uh, Pardon? It's Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. You were dressed up as an elf. Yeah. (laughs) And I think early in the day, early in the day, you'd just done a comedy lecture, and I. I like everybody on the cruise ship were absolutely fascinated with your, your comedy lectures and uh, your knowledge of the business. And, and that's when I really got start talking to you. And then, uh, and then you encouraged me to actually go and look at doing comedy talks. And so I thank you for that. My corky taught me how to lecture without notes. And that's something that you do as well. You just don't have any notes. It's all up here and all the stories that you have. And it just, I think people like to hear about comedy stories and uh, the amount of things that you were telling in those uh, all different shows. And uh, from my experience, you know, people just, they like to, they like to know what, what makes people tick in the entertainment world. Are they all alcoholics? Are they all depressives? Are they one sort of person when they're on stage and when they come off, they're absolutely, you know, totally different morose and stuff like that. I know, I think you've worked with so many people, you would know the answers to a lot of those things. Yes, yeah, the trouble is that, that I have that effect on them, you see. So uh, <laughs> I, I always had a love of it, and I was lucky that I slotted into the end of what we would call the end of the peer shows, which I found derogatory. The end of the peer shows discovered people like Tommy Cooper, Maxwell, all these. I, I got to do the end of those shows, then it became the theatre restaurants. like And then like the Golden Garters, Talk of the Town London, and then that became clubs. Again, yeah. it was more and more, yeah. and it became the social clubs, and each faded away each time like that. So, I've been do, do you know, I found quite quite interesting. I know, I think the start of the eighties, there was this the new wave of comedy were coming through, and they were saying all these old comedians, the Jumper Golfing Brigade, you know, they yeah. they've had their day because this new comedy is coming through. And now I was just looking at the other, the TV the other night there, and I thought, you got Jason Manford, you got Alan Carr doing game shows, yet the Bob Monkhouses and the Bruce Forsyths and uh, the Les Dawsons, they were absolutely being slated in the early eighties. But now that now they just it's gone full circle. Yeah, well, it, it, it does an interesting thing. Who was it? Uh, I spit for you later, Sheila. Yeah. <laughs> It's a girl called Sheila Sexton, used to be an entertainer. Um, there's a question. Who who took over the golden shot? Which Northern comic took over the right, golden okay. shot? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask if you if you're with us still in the comments box, there's no prize for this. This is just a fun question that um Don has given us. But who took over? Give the question again, Don. Which Northern comic took over the golden shot from Bob Monkhouse? Right, okay. Now if uh, I'm seeing if anybody's Got a comment on this. They might have gone off to make a cup of tea. You never know. Uh, I think I know the answer on this one. But uh, if you're there and you know the answer, pop it on a comment now and I'll read it out. 
Uh, have we got anybody? No, that's that's him still take still writing your act down. Okay, they yeah. might may may not want to be wrong, so they're not putting their comments on there. I think it was Norman Vaughan. You are correct. So many people say Charlie Williams. Do I Charlie win a cruise? Tipper. Do I win a cruise? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've got to get to I cruise station. I, can, I, think, I think I can remember what a cruise looks like. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, that's it's. it's that was my last point gig. Front. I, my last time I worked, I got off a ship at the beginning of November, not last year, the year before, and it was uh, and that was my the last time that I worked. And since then, I've chosen retirement. But how do you uh, find that, Don? How do you find retirement? It's easy. It's as easy. The sun. If you're there, Sheila, I'll phone you back shortly. <laughs> this is like a comedy sketch. Sheila, I'm, I'm live. I'm live doing. I'm doing a webinar. You doing what, Don? I'm doing a webinar. Well, oh, spiders. You can get some powder from chemists. No, not not web. I call you back, Sheila. Yeah, I've, I've turned the phone off now. Yeah, don't um, forget the was, milk, Don. <laughs> she did. Uh, she used to do a wonderful act. She did two acts. One was she was a uh, either came on as a cleaning lady singing songs, mopping up, and the other one she was a, a tatty fairy. Because and the song was nobody loves the fairy when she's forty, and she used to walk around very, very good. She's in her eighties now, bless her, you know. Bless. But uh, going back to the other thing, I, I'm lucky that a I've loved the business, I've loved acts, and I've just enjoyed watching so many people, and I enjoyed talking about them. You know, and there's certain lines that if I said to you, Are "You putting it around, I bar me," you know the routine. Eli, away, yeah. Eli Woods and yeah. Jimmy. Casey. Jimmy James, yeah, Jimmy, and Jimmy, Roy Casey, Castle Jimmy, did it. Yeah, and uh, uh, Jimmy Casey was Jimmy James. Jimmy Casey, Jimmy it. James's dad. That was his yeah. son, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but black, black, black or white. <laughs> what you say? But but black, black or, or white. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't got him anymore. The coffee? No, no, the gi gi giraffe. <laughs> Brilliant routine. Uh, in answer to that question, I did have lovely Joyce up in the West Midlands. She said Charlie Williams, which was not the right answer. And somebody else said had Norman but couldn't remember his surname. That's how it gets yeah. us with these things. But listen, we're going to move on to um, – unfortunately, I'm going to wrap things up. But before we do this, uh, you have got a question for us. Now, let me just explain whilst you're getting your question together – let me just explain how you enter the competition uh, to win. There we are. Some of our lovely, the tea house. Now, the tea house, if you're into tea, then go and visit their website. The website here is uh, on the little ticker tape. It's an online tea shop for loose tea and accessories. And there's their website address. Very, very reasonable, very, very helpful. But we're giving another... 250 grams of loose finest english breakfast tea away and don is very very soon he's going to answer a question now to enter all you've got to do is go to my facebook page for a cup of tea with mr g you can't miss it but that is what it looks like there's the link okay and say so i'd like to uh, join as soon as i get the invitation i'll approve that and that means that you can actually message me your answer to Don's question. And then if you do win, uh, I will contact you and we can private message your address. So nobody else knows your address for me to send the tea. And we'll announce the winner before our next guest. And that's going to be next Tuesday, where I've got Little Eagle. Brilliant. Only two man tribute to the eagles on tuesday 29th of june four o'clock and i'm actually going to see the guys this weekend so i'm very excited so that's how you enter the competition don yes my dear your boy. question i, sh <laughs> I want to i want to do like uh, like bullseye you know right super great smashing right don have you got the question great smashing lovely yeah it's, off uh, you go it, it, it's you get nothing in two in the bed for this, don't you know? Right. You get nothing, but you don't get anything for three in the bed except a divorce. And um, mm -hmm. the, the question is, how many episodes of Faulty Towers were there? And repeat that question again, just in case people are writing it down. 
How many episodes of Faulty Towers were there? Okay. So you know what the question is. You know how to enter. You know what the prize is. Uh, I will put it up on Facebook uh, when you've got to get your answer in by. You've actually got to, let, let's say now, you've got to get your answer in uh, by Sunday, this Sunday. That's when your answers have got to be in. So go to my website, ask to join the site. I'll accept your invitation. Then message me with your answer. All the uh, people we put into a hat, one will be pulled out. They will have the tea and I'll announce it like I did uh, with uh my causer who won last week don i hope it's not going to be too long before i can actually get up and see you again and we can have yeah. another mammoth comedy well, chat don't forget i'm only 40 odd miles from bottle with it as well oh is well, that I, mean, a, I yeah. always forget that being a southerner you see you know it's yeah just, yeah, it's down, down, it? yeah yeah but I, yes, I'm just thinking out of my cup here, black print, and I'm thinking how many ships I did on the final cruise. I did the Victoria, I did some of air tours. I, I was a jinx. I was working theatres and clubs, and they closed after I'd been on. <laughs> I was, so, yeah. Well, I, 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 love... I, I tell you what, I know that you, um, you say you're retired, but I'm sure that people can get you to come out and do some work again because once it's in your system you can't ever get rid of it i don't think but what happened was i got I got trampled on on the underground uh somebody knocked me over rushing up the set and it set off arthritis in a quite a bad way and uh so i couldn't stand on stage for 45 minutes and i'm not a sit on a stool type comic like dave allen was but i was taking painkillers and so what's happened i've been placed under this specialist who's turned my life around it really has got me back to that. But I'd like to go back and do lectures again. I wouldn't mind yes. doing that because of the freedom of having to do it. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do 45 minutes, I'll do an hour, et cetera, you know. And, uh, How's I the best way to contact you, Don? How's the best way to contact you? Is that for your mobile or have you a website or what? Uh, I've got Are an email. Yeah, just, just just give the email address out on air in case somebody says, do you not, would love to have him for a comedy lecture because there's the, uh, uh, was it, university groups, what are they called? U3A. Oh, U3A. They might be tuned in and they say, oh, he'll be ideal for a comedy talk and things like yeah. that. So just, just call out an, an email and then, then people have got some sort of contact for you. It's all in small scale. Is that the word? Uh -huh. Small case. And it's Don, Charlie, Adrian, all one word. But Charlie's I-E, Don, Charlie, Adrian. And Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N. Yeah. Don, Charlie, Adrian, at gmail.com. Okay, so that's Don, Charlie, Adrian. All one word. All one word. At, at gmail.com. Yeah. Okay, so if, if anybody's tuned in and they're looking for a comedy talk, Don's your man. You've got his email address and uh, drop him a line. Thank you so much for taking time to join me well, today. It's you. been a it's pleasure as always talking to you about comedy By the and way, about your uh, life. I can buy you to, I've got loads more pictures for you. <laughs> I'll, 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 move, I'll move to a bigger flat. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of them are signed hand size things i've got some signed by please Henry don't Lee. don't don't put them on ebay or anything like that they will have a very good home here yeah i've found some other things as well that I, uh, i'll save you one book i've got a book by I'll, robert i'll, I'll save it when i go back to amsterdam <laughs> what's amsterdam yeah but you remember when we were traveling if we got a flight to shippel we knew we were going to change and fly anywhere in the world from shippel didn't we yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Have you got the dice? Have you got the dice, Don? Let's throw a six and see where we're going. Yeah, well, I've anyway. got my machine. Okay, Google, what time is it? Listen. And you got a ring. What's her name? Your friend it's keeps ringing you. It's, I've got one of these machines. Okay, Google, like Alexa, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, Don. Friend. God bless. Love and lights to you. And uh, yeah. you take care. Keep keep writing. Keep making people smile. Peace, joy, I'll and speak to you soon. All right. God then. bless, Don. Take All the best. Bye. 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 Bye.
So that was the lovely Don Reed, and uh, it's lovely. To, I love to chat to him about uh, comedy and about his life. I've got a few more comments just before I sign off here, and um, yes, here we here we went up to yeah normal cut right. Okay. We had this one here, which was hi my two lovelies, and I think I know who that is. It's like Valentine's Day. It's like you get cards and you think, Who that, who's that from? And this one says, great to see you both. Love this. Love to you both. I think that's my bank manager, possibly. Uh, this one, Don, one of my best mates. That's his bank manager. And uh, my lovely Sheila, who's just moved over to the Green Island of Ireland there. And I hope you're settling in Chile with all the lovely people in there and the lovely weather and the stuff in the Guinness and the stuff. It's grand. It's the grand place. And uh, it'd be lovely to see Sheila again on a cruise ship. Right, just one more thing to mention. And I know a lot of you have already bought your tickets, but if you do fancy winning a holiday with Jean Holidays, the fabulous Jean Holidays, for just £2.00. Now, I do know there's so many things out out there, people saying, enter this to win a house, enter this to win a cruise. And I know the competition is extremely strong. So, And £2 is £2. It's, 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 there's not a lot of money to burn. However, you've still got time to enter to win a fabulous holiday for two people to Warner's Bembridge Coast Hotel on the Isle of Wight. And this is with Gian Holidays. They give you the return ferry crossing included, standard room in the main hotel for three nights, three dinners, three breakfasts, free drinks from 6 p.m. to midnight, certain brands, full entertainment program. Uh, they've got daytime activities as well. There's a choice of two dates. So go to my Facebook page. You'll see details. I'll post it again today. And... The draw is done through Rafael, which is a site that organises your competition for you. I do not have any say in uh, who wins it. It's all done automatically by them. And this draw, I have got no involvement in any of the money. 100% of this money is going to go to two charities. One of them, 50% of the money is going to go to Love Your Hospital. And the other 50% is going to go to the Duncan Edwards Foundation. So that's uh, a little reminder two pounds and you can book it all online i'll put the post up again thank you so much indeed for joining me today next week as i did briefly mention before i'm very excited uh, to uh, talk to paul and wally i had the chance to work with them in cyprus wonderful fantastic if you like the eagles you're going to absolutely love this cup of tea with mr g because they're going to be talking to me about their music about their lives and that's going to be next tuesday the 29th of june at four o'clock whatever you're doing today whatever you're doing this week uh enjoy it and uh, i hope that uh, you have a great week i'm wishing you love and light and as always you know i've got to get those boys in the band to put their gin down and to sign out from me chris g love and lights God bless. and everything's up for tea